What's up guys and welcome to a new video. I don't really have anything to say except that my boys over at Kagura Games decided to release two games I was really really anticipating. <laughs> You gotta be fucking kidding me. And because I was busy with making my last video, I decided to go into fast mode and shortly review both of them in one video. So here you go. And as always, likes and comments are always appreciated as well as a click on the subscription button if you want to see more of my content in the future. But enough of that, let's dive right into the video. Have fun. Koyet Come Collecting Adventurer is another game in the lineup of Azerola that, for the first time in the history of mankind, does not feature any NTR. <laughs> but instead, it focuses on everything the previous games were already so good at, and that is making you come. Heart. And it really doesn't try to hide that fact. So naturally, at the beginning of the game you have to pick a side in the ongoing war between plot and justice, which will alter every scene you'll find in the game. After that you'll be greeted with a story that, again, could only be in a game that only has that one goal in mind. You play as Coyette, an alchemist in training. You heard me right, not an alchemist, we all know how that ends, but an alchemist that needs to collect cum in order to brew potions and craft items. So basically her master leaves her alone in town and she needs to fulfill different quests at the guild that involves such classics as brewing Viagra and testing it, helping a guy who got stuck under a tree by letting him jerk off to you, defeating a specific amount of monsters or better, getting defeated by them and some charming minigames in the meantime like following someone without getting spotted. And even in between the actual quests you can freely propose to anyone in town to collect more cum for brewing. Or what about just checking out the different events within the town that unlock with the variety of clothes you can buy for Coyette. Oh and forget about practicality. The more skin an outfit reveals, the better stats it has. So basically like any Japanese MMO, except that the scenes here are obviously ways more explicit, but also a lot hotter. Seriously, I love the Azzarola style since their first game and nothing has changed about that. The CG is still beautiful, has a proper resolution unlike RPG Maker games, and for all the newcomers to my channel, is 100% uncensored, like every release from Kagura Games on Steam. And for everyone who doesn't like Koyet's look too much, just put other characters in your party that have unique outfits to buy and get featured in your game over CG. What about massive tits for example? Or maybe you like girls with a little more… fur? No? What about some chocolate? Still no? Well then you should probably go for the trap, but don't worry, as long as he's cute, it's not gay. Oh yeah, and there are also guys, but they don't have age scenes, so who cares? So to sum it up quickly, if this game doesn't satisfy your needs, I don't know what the hell would. Everything hentai about this game is absolutely amazing. The minigames are kinda fun, as well as the crafting, and the battles that take up a moderate amount of playtime felt pretty good to me. Koyet Come Collecting Adventurer gets 9 out of 10 instant comments from me. For Runeseeker I'm gonna be a little more serious again, because there's just a little more to unpack. Here you play as Quem, a petite red-haired girl that once again has been cursed with a mark that lets all monsters go feral on her and now she's on a quest to kill a demon in order to go back to normal. So far so generic, but where Rune Seeker really shines is its visuals that left me in disbelief about it being made in RPG Maker and the combat that is pretty fun even if it only consists of dashing around and hitting enemies with different weapons. You start the game in the town of Sukesor, which works as your hub map and place to get weapons and quests. Those are split up in three categories. Main quests usually involve exploring a new dungeon and defeating a boss at the end of it. Side quests involve all kinds of stuff from finding a missing cat to literally defeating God. And bounty hunting quests that require you to revisit a specific dungeon and spend enough time in it for the right monster to randomly show up. Back in my 2019 top list I drew a connection to Zelda, but to be honest, it feels a lot more like the Binding of Isaac. Every map is split up in a bunch of tile maps that either have enemies, NPCs or resources on them. Those resources can be flowers that heal you instantly, gems that increase your money or new weapons that all play a little different due to their range, speed and damage. Sadly all that variety falls pretty flat if you realize that constantly upgrading a normal longsword at the blacksmith makes it so good that there is no need to even pick up another weapon until the last 20 minutes of the game. Also the game floods you with money, which makes every spell basically useless. Need a heal? Just buy 50 potions and still have 97% of your money left. So that's quite some lost potential. But what really annoyed me were the frame drops. 
I don't exactly know where they are coming from, but I think it has something to do with the game being unable to clear up its own cache. So the longer you play, the higher the chance of stutters that can last up to a second. I usually wouldn't mind that in a RPG maker game, but Ruin Seeker focuses on quick combat where mere seconds decide whether you kill an enemy or it kills you. A possible fix for that issue is setting the game to 30 FPS in the options, but I didn't look into it for long enough to give you a definitive answer about it. Don't get me wrong here. The game is still pretty fun and I played through the whole 6 hours of gameplay in one sitting. I just want to let you know that it's by far not perfect, even if it's ways above the average hentai RPG. Oh, um, yeah, the, the hentai, right? I uh, totally forgot about that. Well, Runeseeker's approach to hentai is the exact opposite to Koyet. If you didn't know better, you wouldn't even notice that there is hentai in it, because 95% of all scenes happen after defeat, so if you don't die, you wouldn't even get to see any action. But there's actually lots of action, and it's pretty well made. Every single scene features great animations and definitely serves its purpose of good fapping material. I'm just wondering if the scenes were even necessary. I mean surely they look good and are a big reason for people to check out the game, but other than that, the gameplay or the story don't profit from it at all. Something that I personally value a lot if it comes to loot games, because otherwise I could just like watch something else, go to rule 34, look at pictures and animations, you know? Context is important. Whether you're an adult or just a kid doesn't matter. The most important thing is how big you are. And that's it for today. Just on a small note, YouTube decided to give me a warning about posting a link to my Discord. I asked about it but I didn't get a reply yet, so if you wanna join it, you need to either click on my channel banner or check out the description of my previous videos. Alright, and now you go have a great weekend and we'll see each other in the next video. Bye!